Newspaper. Paperclip. Tripper. What's going on, everybody? Jay Hayes here. Today I'm be doing a review on a device that I was sent. Nope, that's not right because I actually bought it. What is up? How you doing? Top of the morning to you, breakfast face. Afterlife RDA. Okay, so here's the deal with this. There's not a lot of stuff inside of the package. And of course, it's just a dripper, so there shouldn't be. There's a lot of people in the industry that know who the gentleman is, that owns the company, that houses the gentleman that works for him. Essentially, what we have is Mountain Vapors, owned by Ryan Hall, I believe. He may have a silent partner, not 100% sure, but he's not really a vape reviewer, per se. He's more like a vape vlogger, like the day in the life, essentially. And he has these different shops he goes around to, and he shoots the shit, and they try flavors and make rap songs. I, listen, I don't, you do what you gotta do. Ryan Hall, I guess, got with Immortal Mods, also known as Armageddon Manufacturing. Now, if you've been out of the loop and you've been sleeping under a rock for a while, you probably don't know the situation. Armageddon is the company that is responsible for all the shit that all these other companies have had to endure and prove otherwise where their products were made. Armageddon was telling people for a long time that their products were made in USA. And we're talking about the drippers that they made hundreds of thousands of, even the mods. And then they got into it and said, you know what? The drippers aren't made here. They're made in China, but the mods are still made here. Eventually what ended up happening is they got so much shit. They actually changed the name of the company. Now it is Immortal Mods out of China, I guess. I. I don't know where it's out of, but I do know that the company has a distribution center down in Florida, which may have been the old name. I, I don't really want to give a lot of information about that because I'm not really 100% sure as to the set details of it. I guess Mountain Vapors and Immortal Mods got together and then I think they made the Rapture, their own version of it. You know, essentially like the all the other jammies, the two posts. And then I guess he got with the gentleman, Joshua, who actually works there and says, listen, you got a design, let's send that over as well to Immortal Mods and have them make it. And that's where this comes in. Now, this is the first product ever since the whole ordeal happened to where I'm actually doing a review on an Immortal Mods product. In the presentation video of this, you know, Ryan Hall's doing his little skit, whatever, and he's talking to the gentleman that designed it, and they make it sound like there's a lot of design and innovation that's inside of this. I'm going to tell you that there is something that's unique with this. The fact that this thing looks like a fucking mushroom. Almost like Larry from the Three Stooges with the hair, how he had it bowl cut, but it it might not be Larry, it might be Mo. I think Mo was the fat guy. No, that was Curly. The guy with the long brown hair, whatever. You'll see when I pull it out. There is something different with this, and that's how you access the screws for the post. So it's kind of postless, but it's not. So without further ado, let me just bring this down and show you everything inside of the box. Because that's what we're here to talk about the Afterlife RDA. The box on this is extremely not exciting whatsoever. It's just a simple box. So without further ado, let's flip it. Afterlife written on the front, you have an ink on the top. On the top side of the box, nothing on the side. It's gonna say Mountain Vapors. Now this is the company for which Ryan Hall owns. And the gentleman that works there is the guy that created this. His name is Joshua. On the sides, really nothing. On the flip side of that, big ass 18 warning sticker. A little hard to read up here, but it says for any questions or concerns, please go to mountainvapors.net. Inside your profile patch, you're gonna get a Barbie screwdriver, an Allen key, some extra O-rings, some extra post screws and then a squat pin because the one that's located inside of here is the studded 510. On the bottom of the dripper, Mountain Vapors 0245. It would have been really cool if they allowed him to put his name down here since, in fact, he did design it instead of stealing all the spotlight putting Mountain Vapors on the bottom. <laughs> I don't know if that's <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and tell me that doesn't look like that. Come on! Jesus Christ. Anyway. 
right, let's let's move forward. Drip tip on the top is going to be 810 configuration. It is a little set in there, and then you have an O-ring built into the top cap, which basically looks like a hairpiece. I don't know why they went with that design. I guess just for uniqueness. And you can tell on the side the machining is not very good at all. There is already some dings and dents, and obviously burrs, spurs, and lots of cowboy boots in there. You know, the Dead Rabbit did this with this silver inlay on a black dripper, and a lot of people gave it shit because it just did not look good. Almost over branding. You could have just engraved that and kept it black. That would have looked nice. Let's take the hair piece off. Okay, so, um, mm, huh. the machining and the finish on the inside of this is not very well done whatsoever. There is your air ports, so the burrs and spurs you saw was on the actual barrel itself, not the airflow adjustment. You have single coil or dual coil configuration. And then here's your barrel. It's almost like they painted it and then they cut it out instead of doing it the other way. the hell is that noise and then here is the deck a little bit dirty make sure whenever you get a brand new dripper you just go ahead and clean that up really good nothing too crazy here big ass o-ring on the bottom flat head screw obviously if you put the squonk in it's just going to squonk directly in the center what makes this unique though is the way that you have access to these screws because it's postless if they would have kept the lip here without these cutouts you wouldn't be able to get to those screws this is one of the fantastic reasons as to why i fucking despise flat head screws so when i stick my screwdriver in here and i get this right and i'm unscrewing it whatever now do you see what happened here i just got that screw out so how do i get this screw on here well i think i just answered my own question um i'm sorry it's just now if you don't have a proper flathead screw you may have a bit of a problem Right there. So the proper... There you go, just be very careful. If you don't have a proper size screwdriver, what's gonna happen is that will get loose and you're gonna have a very hard time sticking a screwdriver in there to essentially adjust it. Over here is your positive block and this is your negative. If you're creative enough, you could do one coil here, one coil here, or you could do outside, inside, inside, outside. So the way that they configure this is so you could use a really wide set coil with a lot of wraps, or you could do an inside where it's just bang and bang, or you could do a normal, which is right here and right here is a bit of a spacing so this is promoting a very very large build and it is postless so listen the world is your oyster open it up and find a pearl regular round 22 gauge eight wraps a piece here we go You'll see that when you put the coils in, you don't have any place for your cotton. You kind of have to tuck the tails to the left and right hand side of each coil that you put in respectively. <laughs> Bree got a little bit of inspiration here to draw this ankh or ankh. And this is what she came up with. <laughs> 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 
This looks like it belongs in the Blair Witch Project. <laughs> There's about as, there's about as much as creativity in this than there is in this. The only difference is this is very transparent. It's good. What is he doing? He's dancing. So here we are with the Afterlife RDA sitting on top of a very high-end mech mod by Statquam. Let me show you some vape production. Here we go. I don't even know where to begin. Let's just begin with how it looks on the outside. The silver inlay on the black looks absolutely horrible. Like, I don't know who told somebody at some point in time, listen, you gotta start putting silver inlays on your black RDAs because I think that it's probably one of the worst looks. I legitimately would rather have a gold-plated deck than a silver inlay barrel. It's that serious, or even sandblasted. I just, I think that it looks very, very tacky and it also makes it appear very, very cheap. Fun little factoid for you though is if you don't like the way that a silver inlay looks i don't know how this would work because a barrel gets hot but you could take a crayon essentially and then color that in and then just wipe it off and now it's the color of whatever the crayon is that would work in a mod i've done it several times i used to do this back in the day with like beepers where it said motorola on the back but the problem is with this is it may melt that crayon which is essentially wax and now you're gonna have wax on the outside of your dripper and if you have it on a high end, you're gonna get wax all over that. Not really good. So as far as aesthetically, this thing is definitely challenging. The haircut on the top, no dice. Why didn't they use Delrin or Ultim? Because being the way that they designed this, I automatically think, okay, put massive builds inside of this. Even if you don't, and you just put little 24s in a dead smack center like I did, you get decent flavor, there's no doubt about it. And I'm sure that if I put the coils closer to the airflow, I would get that much more flavor. But the problem you run into is you have a separate top cap like that, and bringing the coils really close, because of the thickness of the top cap, it's gonna get close to this and possibly ground out. Out. And on a mech mod, that's the last thing you want is a hard short. The machining for the airports on the barrel are not good as well. The deck, however, is machined well, and it's a nice little thing. I wouldn't say that this is groundbreaking or record setting. It's just another dripper. I would never use this dripper no matter what color configuration it's in just because of the top cap that's on this. What I could do, though, is take a chubby cap and give this more airflow. Let's see if I got that. So what we got now is a chubby on the top of that. What that does, although it mismatches and it's ugly as shit on the top of there, you are able to get these in different color configurations. If you haven't seen a review for that, I'll post the link right there. Basically what that does allow you to take a 24 or 25 and then put a chuff cap or a wide bore on the top and now you don't have to worry about it getting hot and it's gonna dissipate heat really quick because it's Delring. So here you go. Wow, see that's way better. That's not the dripper though, you understand? I guess in theory it is the dripper, but me adding that is not how it naturally comes. So the problem you run into is the top cap that it comes with does get hot. That's not me being exaggerative. If you put a lower build in that, you're not gonna be happy with the way that it's gonna perform. Now, if I did bring the coils closer to the airflow, it should essentially keep it cooler quicker just because you got air literally hitting that coil to cool it down. That doesn't mean that this is a great dripper though. This dripper as a whole, the way that it is by default, I don't like this dripper. If I was to rate this drip on a zero to 10, I'm probably gonna give it a three to a 3.5. The barrel is that ugly with the silver inlay. The top cap is that ugly. It reminds me of a bowl cut of that kid that I posted. If you haven't seen that, I'm just gonna plaster that right there on the screen. And then that is what that reminds me of. So they're very similar. 
just not gonna work for me at all. The deck isn't bad, but I don't feel like it's needed just because, well, it's postless, but it makes you cut your legs really short. And if you have a really big build in there, which is almost like what this is promoting, it's just gonna maintain heat. The question that I have is primarily for Ryan Hall as a business. Why would you put your name on the side of a dripper that's already been done? Literally, it's already been done by the same exact company that you're buying just under a different name. And then why would you create this? I get it, Joshua wants to feel special. Just because somebody wants to feel loved inside doesn't mean that they should be creating devices that are not good. Someone has to tell somebody at some point in time, listen, this isn't your calling, go back to what you were doing prior. <sighs> And I was watching a video on the gentleman that designed this took a lot of pride in creating that deck like it was something that was super innovative, but he should have also innovated the airflow because just modifying the deck does not affect the airflow at all. Well, I guess it does because you're removing posts. This dripper just does not work for me. Three, 3.5, and that's me being really, really friggin' polite. And I've kept it real. Have you? Jesus.